If you set up your home lab with services like Plex, Jellyfin, and Bitwarden and encounter SSL warnings while accessing the web interfaces, don't worry. While it might seem harmless on your local network, securing your services is important. And in this video, I'll show you an easy and automated way to secure all your services with SSL certificates, eliminating those SSL warnings for good. For this video, you will need a public domain. I recommend Cloudflare as the domain register with domain names starting at $9.75 per year. Alternatively, you can also use Docky DNS for free. You will also need a website or a service. In this video, we'll use Jellyfin as a service to expose and Nginx Proxy Manager as our local example. You will also need Nginx Proxy Manager installed on your home lab. Don't worry if you don't have it yet, as I'll guide you through the setup in this video. So without further ado, Let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to set up here is we're going to set up the Nginx proxy manager. I've set up a Rocky 9.3 VM here. I already installed Docker, so we're setting up this with Docker. If you don't know how to install Docker or you're not familiar with Docker, I'm gonna leave up here a video that you can follow so that you can get Docker up and running. Okay, so we have the VM here. I'm just going to navigate to slash opt. And here I already created a folder called Docker. So inside Docker, I uh, also created another folder called Nginx proxy and this is going to be the folder that is going to host our Nginx proxy manager container. So I'm going to CD into it. I already created a Docker Compose configuration file. So I'm going to open it and we're going to go through it really quickly. So we have two services. We have the Nginx proxy manager itself and then we have a database. It's Maria database. Here is just the image. I'm using the Nginx proxy manager version 2.10.4. I find that this is the one that is more stable at the moment. There's a couple of ports that we need to open here. This uh, We need port port 80, we need port 443, and we need port 81. Before we are able to set up the SSL, port 81 is going to be the port used by the web UI. Then we have a couple of environment variables for the database. So we have uh, the host, the port, the database username. We have also the database password and same thing for the, the name of the database. We don't need IPv6, so it's just disabled. And we're also mapping a couple of volumes. So we're mapping the data volume and we also are going to map the Let's Encrypt folder where it's going to store all our certificates. Uh, we're going to set set it to depend on Maria database so that the container doesn't start unless the other container is up and running. And we're also going to define a couple networks. So in this case, I'm just defining one network down here. This is just called front end. It just a network type of bridge. So we are going to put the name here, network frontend. And our second service is the Maria database. The Maria database is, is the same. You can use the latest one here and the container name. You can name it whatever you want. We have a couple of environment variables for my SQL. So these ones need to match what you put here so that the Nginx proxy manager is able to connect to the database. So just follow the same pattern. You put the password, database name, user password, and auto upgrade if you want to. You set that to one. We're also mapping a couple volume so my sql uh, folder on the host to var lib my sql on the container and we're also connecting it to the same network so the front end network and our restart policy is unless stopped if the vm or your host restarts the container is also going to restart and at the end we just have the definition of our network so let's close this down so write and quit this configuration file is going to be in the description below so you can just copy and paste it if you if you want to to have it directly okay so we're going to save and quit perfect now we're going to to put our container up. So we're going to do docker compose up dash D. This is going to pull all the images that it needs to get the containers up and running. Okay, so it looks like everything is up and running. We're going to clear the terminal and let's just do a docker docker ps. And as you can see, our two containers are up there. So we have our Nginx proxy manager and we have our MariaDB up too. So I have my browser here. So we're going to navigate it to the IP of this VM. In this case is 192.168.0.136. And like I said before, this is using port 81. So we're just gonna go ahead and click that. And as you can see, our Nginx proxy manager is up and running. Okay, so now with our Nginx proxy manager up and running, first, we're gonna make sure that we're able to log in and create our admin account. And before we create any Nginx rules or any certificates, let's set up Jellyfin, which is going to be the service that we're going to expose to the internet. Let's go back to my terminal here. If I go back to slash opt docker, here I created another folder called Jellyfin. And if we go inside Jellyfin, I created the Jellyfin docker compose configuration. So we're gonna go really quickly through it. Here we have our services. So we have Jellyfin, we have the image. I'm using version 10.8.13. The container name is going to be Jellyfin. Here we have some environment variables that you could use. This is just 
just to map out the user. We also have our time zone, which is America Toronto. And we're also mapping a couple of volumes. So in this case, here is where you choose where to map your movie library and then just put the path on your server here and it's going to be mapped into data and movies. Now we are also exposing a couple of ports. So we have port 8096, which is your, your, your GUI. And then we have a couple of ports of auto discovery for your local network. These ports are optional, but I recommend you to put them in. So now we're also defining a network. So here we are plugging this Jellyfin container to the Nginx proxy front end network. I'm going to explain to you a little bit where where do we get this name from. And our restart policy is on restart unless stopped. So same as all of our other containers. And last but not least, we need to define the network. So the network here is Nginx proxy front end and we define it as external. So external true. Now I'm going to show you where I'm getting this information. So we just write and quit. And if we do Docker network LS, you can see that there's a network that is up and running right now called Nginx proxy front end and it's of type bridge. Well, this network is created because we have our Nginx proxy manager up right now. So as you can see, both our containers from the Nginx proxy manager are up. This compose creates this network. So this is where I'm getting the name of Nginx proxy front end to define the network in our Jellyfin container. Okay, so now we're ready to put our Jellyfin container up. We're gonna use our classic command of docker compose up dash D it's going to pull all the images and everything that it needs to get Jellyfin up and running. Okay, so now our Jellyfin container is up. We're going to do a Docker PS just to make sure that it is there. Jellyfin is there. Okay, so now we're going to navigate to the web UI of Jellyfin. And as you can see, we have our Jellyfin up and running. Now let's connect to our Nginx proxy manager and make sure that we can create an account. The default email address and password to connect to the Nginx proxy manager is admin at example.com and the password password is change me. The first thing that we're greeted with is creating our own account. So here you can create your account. So I could be admin, admin and nickname admin. You can put whatever you want. Email address. I recommend you put a legit one, but it could also just be a random one. So I'm just going to put admin at distrodomain.com, for example. And now it's going to ask you to create a new password. So we just create a password. Uh, current password is change me new password you can be whatever and save so now we're here in the nginx proxy manager okay so let's go to the dashboard okay so now that we have our nginx proxy manager and our jellyfin services up and running now it's time to create our domain names create our api token for a dns challenge to create our certificates and also to generate our ssl certificates with let's encrypt here i'm going to show you how to do it with cloudflare the only thing you need to know is that your domain register needs to support api or API token to be able to change DNS records on your public domain. I'm going to go to my Cloudflare dashboard. And here I'm going to use gameexplicit.com uh, domain, which is one of my old domains that I have. And we're going to create DNS records. So we're going to click on here on DNS records. We're going to scroll all the way down and we're going to click here on add a record. And for the name, since this is Jellyfin, I'm going to add a jelly. And for the IP, I'm going to add my public IP address. Here you will have to replace that with your public IP address. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either use a proxy version or you can use simple DNS. If you're using Cloudflare, I suggest you use uh, a proxy connection. So whenever you yourself or someone else tries to ping or access jelly.gameexplicit.com, it's actually going to resolve to Cloudflare's IP instead of your public IP. This way you protect your public IP from being exposed or from being easily readable by anyone. So once that's done, the, then we are going to to click on save and now we have our type a record now it can take a few moments for the dns record to be propagated on most of the public internet dns servers we just have to wait a little bit before you uh, generate your certificate so now that the a record is set now we need to generate your api token so that you can create a dns challenge and generate your ssl certificate so you just need to go in the same page here and you go down and you click on get your api token here is going to load like all uh, all your tokens for the account and then just create a new one so create token. The type of token that we want to do is just edit zone DNS. This is one of the, the cool things that I like about Cloudflare is that you have a lot of granular access to your API tokens that you can generate. Other registers are usually they only have one API token and it basically can do anything on your domain. So here we only need to be able to edit a DNS zone. So we're going to click on use template and this is fairly, fairly easy. We're just going to click on zone DNS. We're going to select edit because it needs to write and read. So zone resources. So you can specify a zone, a specific zone that you want the API to access. So if you have multiple 
multiple domains registered with Cloudflare, you can select this API token to either have access to all your domains or just one domain. So in this case, I'm going to specify one domain, which is gameexplicit.com. So I'm going to click on that. Now you can also create a client IP filtering uh, rule. This option is so that Cloudflare can only reply to API requests from a specific public IP. So here it gives us even more granularity and security. This is why I love Cloudflare. You can click on is in, and then here you can put your public IP. So I'm going to select my public IP here, and then I'm going to continue to summary and I'm going to click on create token. So make sure to secure this token. Don't give it to anyone and then just click on copy. We're just going to save it somewhere where we can find it more easily. Okay. So once your token is secure, now we can go back to our Nginx proxy manager. So we can check if our DNS record is already propagated and we're able to ping it. So we're going to go back to our terminal here and we're going to try to ping our servers. As you can see, we're able to resolve the DNS and we're able to ping a server. In this case, this is one of Cloudflare's uh, servers. So we're good to go. So now we can go back to for Nginx proxy manager. Now we're going to click on host and we're going to click on proxy host. We're going to add a new host and we're going to add our domain. So it's jelly.gamex explicit.com for the scheme we're going to use http because if we go back to jellyfin jellyfin right now it's exposing an unsecure port and this is basically http and we're also going to need the port that jellyfin is using so we're going to go back here and we're going to paste our port to forward a host name or an ip so because nginx proxy manager and jellyfin container are on the same docker network we can actually use the name of a container so if we go back to our terminal here and we type docker ps uh, our container name is Jellyfin, so I'm going to grab that and I'm just going to paste it here. If your server would be outside of the Docker or it would be a, sp a specific server, you can use the IP or the host name for that server to forward the request. For Jellyfin, the only option that I'm going to enable here is WebSockets. Cache assets and block common exploits are more advanced, so you can look into that more if you want to. And now we're going to click on the SSL tab. And here is where we're going to generate our certificate. So we're going to click on request a new SSL certificate. So we're going to click on USDNS challenge and here is going to ask you for your provider. So in this case, my provider is Cloudflare. So I'm going to select Cloudflare. And here is where we need to paste our API token. So I'm going to delete this part here. So we grab the API token. We paste it there. Now for the propagation seconds, here you can add a few seconds if the DNS hasn't been propagated properly. And then the generation of the certificate is going to wait a little bit and try a couple of times to see if it can resolve the domain. In this case, I believe our domain is already resolving. So we don't need to add any seconds here. And last but not least, we have to agree to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. And once everything is done, we're going to click on Save. And usually this takes a few seconds and we should have proxy rule and a Let's Encrypt certificate for our exposed service of Jellyfin. Okay, so it took a bit of time, but Finally, I was able to generate my certificate. I was getting a few errors at the beginning. It was just a matter of time. I am I was a bit impatient. Um, it takes time for the DNS records to update everywhere. So now that I have my host and my certificate ready, the only thing that is left to do is to open the port 443 in my firewall. My firewall is a unified USG, and this can vary depending on what type of firewall you have at home, whether you have Unify, PFSense, or a home router. But I'll show you quickly how to do it on Unify it's not very complicated. I'm logged here on my Unify and you would go to networks. You will scroll all the way down and you have an option here called port forwarding. So here you would just click on configure and then you would cr create an entry. Here I already created it. It's just 443 from any to port 443 and you have to put the IP of your server where you have the Docker containers. So you would just click on create entry, fill out the form, add entry, and then you're good to go. So this is so that Cloudflare can communicate through your firewall to your server hosting your Docker containers. If we navigate to jellyfin.gameexplicit.com, I already did here, but I'll just refresh it for you guys. You can see that now we have our Jellyfin welcome screen and our certificate is valid. So we have an HTTPS connection. The certificate you, we can check here is uh, generated by Let's Encrypt and it has the expiration dates and everything that you need to know. You can achieve the same thing with DocDNS if you are not using Cloudflare. So I'll just show you where you can get the API tokens. I'm just here in my DocDNS account and it's basically the same. You will generate a token and then you will generate our domain. With DocDNS, it took a bit longer for the DNS to actually be uh, accessible. It took about 30 minutes before I was able to ping my domain. So I suggest if you're doing doc DNS to be a little bit more patient with, with the domains. So now we're going to go back to our Cloudflare account and I'm going to add a second service here. Now, remember that I said that we were going to ex use an example of 
uh, service that we want to expose. In this case, we're done with Jellyfin. Now I'm going to give you an example of a local service. So in this case, we're going to add SSL to our Nginx Proxy Manager instance. This could also be any other service that you have at home, like Port Trainer, Home Assistant, or anything like that. So we're going to go back to our records and we're going to add a new record. And in this case, we're going to add, let's say, Proxy. Instead of adding a public IP address, I'm going to add the the local IP address of my server. We will not be able to use the proxy, of course, because we're resolving to a local IP, not a public IP. So we have to turn proxy off and time to live. We're just leaving an auto and we're going to click on save. So this is going to generate proxy.gameexplicit.com. We're going to click on save. Now we just, again, we wait a few, a few minutes before this is available. If I go back to my server here, we can try and ping it. And as you can see, right away is working. Now, one caveat about this setup is that for you to be able to resolve the name proxy.gameexplicit.com, your computer uh, needs to have access to the internet so that you can check the public records of the internet. Uh, alternatively, you can have a DNS at home that then will resolve for that. But uh, this is like a more easy setup for, for everyone. Okay, so our proxy domain is working. So now let's add another host in our proxy manager. So we're going to go back to our proxy manager. We're going to click on add proxy. And now we're going to add himself for the domain name. We're going to select proxy.gameexplicit.com. A scheme is going to be HTTP because we're using HTTP for this. I'm going to enable web sockets again, and I'm going to use the same technique as Jellyfin where we're going to use the name of the, of the proxy. So Docker PS and the name of our container is engine proxy. So we're going to like that. We're going to put it here. And then the port that is using is port 81. Now we're going to go to SSL. We're going to repeat the same process, request a new SSL certificate. We're going to use a DNS challenge. We're going to use our cloud flare provider, and we're going to reuse our API token. So replace that with our token propagation in seconds. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. Once all that's done, we're going to click on save. This should take a few minutes and then your certificate it will be generated. Okay, so you might see this type of errors. This is the errors that I was that I was saying before that you can get this error. You just need to wait a little bit and then try again. Okay, so I just waited a few more minutes and I tried again. And now my certificate is generated by Let's Encrypt. Now, all we have to do is we need to try and access this service. So if I click on proxygameexplicit.com, as you can see, we're back to our proxy manager, but now it's secured with SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. And if we actually ping our domain now, you can see that it's resolving to my local IP. Okay, so with this, now we have a way to automatically generate certificates either for local access or for external access for all our services in our home lab. So this is all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you on the next one.